Carpe diem, my name is- no. Come in, all of you. What's happening, people? This is gonna be fun, folks. Get the popcorn, cause it's about to get good. Way ahead of you on that one. I said, are you ready? It's hell, it's going crazy. It certainly is, Wompy Whoopi Goldberg. Her words, not mine. Did you know they had celebrity impersonators? Yeah, I'm supposed to be Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> What was I talking about again? Carpe diem, my name is Ultranatic, right. And this is the final part of Total Drama Reviews, the Tiki Trouble Trilogy. This is where I, as a lover of animation and reality shows, look over the show and combine them together the best. And for this arc's Return of the Jedi, we have If You Can't Take the Heat. In this episode, which ends the supposed bad luck curse from the Screaming Gophers, we focus on a cooking challenge between the teams. And fittingly, I see many parallels between this and my second favorite reality show, Hell's Kitchen. Will this episode be given the coveted black jacket or be told to... GET OUT! Well, grab a pan and make sure it doesn't stick. That's why it's cold, don't stick! Told you there'd be a lot of Ramseyisms in this episode. This is If You Can't Take the Heat. So we open with a CGI shot of the camp, and not even the only one we get in this episode. There's absolutely a reason for that. Duncan wakes up to Harold's underwear being on the floor, but Harold denies it's his. Oh right, you're always leaving your gits lying around. Okay, Harold leaving his underwear around is gross. But I usually see ladies get disgusted by this, not as much guys. No one else wears that kind, dude. I'm going for a shower. I think Harold needs to be taught a lesson, boy. But these guys have such a problem with this that they want to torment Harold. Hit me with your best shot. We'll stop leaving your butt bags all over the cabin and we'll back off. I told you it wasn't me. If there was ever a time to beat somebody up for no reason, it would be now. Anyways, Chris announces the next challenge is going to be a cook-off, where they'll use food supplies delivered by dolphins. I'd like a spin-off show with dolphin delivery workers. It's gotta be better than the Burr's Flub. So Jeff is chosen as the head chef for the killer bass because of his choice for Italian food, while Heather for her team's Hawaiian theme just straight up calls for the head chef position. Hello, we're on a losing streak, and really everyone else on the team is pretty useless. Well, with her divine sense of teamwork, I'm sure there won't be any problems with this challenge, tiki or no tiki. Okay. We got like three courses and six people. So everybody partner up. And while I'm here, I might as well knock out all the Killer Bass's highlights. Dunk me bigger in a way that you know they'll be the next showmance. Careful your big paws don't mash the pastry. Careful your uptight butt doesn't curdle the custard. You're such a slob. You know, you'd be a lot more fun without that pole up your butt. I'm like the most easygoing person I know. Oh yeah, you're totally laid back. Oh, why do you keep saying the exact opposite of what I say? Because you keep saying such stupid things. Harold's clothes get hijacked as he lives up to his title of the butt monkey for the episode. And I mean that in more ways than one. Which doesn't please Bridget in the slightest as her boo is apparently behind these pranks. And I gotta say that I side with her, I don't like this subplot. But we'll get to exactly why later on. I think he digs you. Maybe. Oddly enough though, Bridget still wants to flirt with Jeff's mean spirited derriere. He is kinda cute. Yeah, he's totally doing something really mean and stupid. Maybe he and I can have dinner later on, but maybe she'll cancel that date after all. As Jeff says yet another accidentally insulting thing that he meant to come off as complimentary. You know, you look good when you're cooking dinner. Kinda like my friend Evan's really hot mom. Excuse me? Are you a dumb blonde? And now we've gotten all that out of the way, it's time to move on to the actual highlights of the episode. Everything revolving around the Screaming Gophers. Most of that revolves around Heather's <clears throat> leadership. I know how to make a pineapple chutney that would melt the socks off the devil. Oh really? Since I'm head chef, we're gonna stick to my plan. And my plan is pineapples with sticks through them, got it? For any fans of Total Drama and Hell's Kitchen out there, doesn't she remind you of someone? Well, evidently, I need new eyebrows, but we don't always get what we want. You up the whole rhythm of the kitchen and I, and I knew this was gonna happen. Um, I didn't get to be head chef because of poor presentation. No, no, then if you, if you don't wanna hear other people's opinions, don't move in a house with 14 other people. Um, Honestly, the resemblance of Heather with Elise, one of the most hateable, maniacal, argumentative, unapologetic little she-devils to ever come face to face with Chef Ramsay is uncanny. I didn't get to be head chef because of poor presentation. No, you got to be head chef because you called it. Are you gonna be a team player or not? I'll show you, bitch. Everyone you don't have to get me, I'm right You better here. get out of my face. Ugh. 
looks like I'm on a team of morons. Let me ask you a serious question right now. Do you take medication? Please because stop. I think that you Quit are living like in this. another world. Also, full disclosure to Hell's Kitchen fans, I love Heather and Elise equally. Hold it, hold it. In a love to hate them kind of way. Honestly, that's the best way to watch either of these two. As so unlikable, it's entertaining. It's okay. You can hate me. Now that being said, even if Heather's as effective a leader as this guy, I'll admit she's not directly responsible for the loss of her team. Only indirectly responsible, but we'll get to that later on. Go back to the truck and get more oranges. <laughs> Bees. My god. Trent, heads up! Oh, screw the freaking counter. That's blood on the floor. Oh, that's what they want you to believe. You kill someone! I guess Heather's choices for certain stations weren't smart, though. Like putting Lashana on a pineapple appetizer when she's allergic to them. Are you gonna be a team player or not? Ooh, I'm a team player, but I'm also allergic to pineapples! But wait, didn't you just say... I know how to make a pineapple chutney that would melt the socks off the devil! Don't you just love that first draft they sent to the script supervisor for that scene? But no worries, an easy fix to this problem with the pineapples is gloves. Ooh, two-faced, bossy little... Ooh! <sighs> gloves overrated, am I right? Anyway, speaking as an avid fan of this crazy, insane, soundbite-spewing show... Oh, and I like Hell's Kitchen, too. <laughs> we begin to see a lot of staples of a typical Hell's Kitchen episode. The goat on the men's team who can't catch a break. And yes, I know there are ladies on the Killer Bass team, but work with me here. The woman having a bossy control freak leader who they can't stand. And the obvious crumbling of said bossy leader. Oh, speaking of which, Heather gets her come up it's more times than one in this episode. First, Lindsay, the girl that she placed on the food that she has no idea how to cook, couldn't light up their upside-down cake. It's like talking to an eggplant. Yeah, well, you're a cantaloupe. So she pulls a fallout boy and lights him up. And by them, I mean her eyebrows. Ah! My eyebrows! I wouldn't be too upset, Heather. You were going to lose them in a few years anyway. Regardless, she sends Owen to get her makeup kit. But the bees! No! No, no, not the bees! Not the bees! I'm sorry, literally everyone else in the internet is in that as well, and I just want to belong. But after she lashes at her team again, they decide to top her comeuppance with an even further comeuppance by stealing her makeup kit and tossing it in the fridge, meaning to lock her in. Beth! Give me! At least that's what would happen had Lindsay not caught it. Because surely the dim-witted but loyal Lindsay wouldn't betray her ally. <laughs> wow. I have absolutely no clue why Lindsay just dissed Heather like that. And I don't really care. Lindsay rocks! So yeah, Heather gets locked in the fridge. Maybe she'll come across the cast of Spongebob in a crummy special again. And all because Lashana wanted to exact an even better revenge than Gwen already did. I mean, apparently tossing her off a cliff wasn't enough. I choose to dwell on that because any non-animated person wouldn't ignore that. Anyway, the party's set up, and the bass are great on their courses. Your anti-pasto, pass the testo. Pass the pasta, please. On a scale of 1 to 10, 15! Okay, that's just a judge not abiding by their own rules. And also worthy of this. <laughs> Never mind, you win this round. The Gophers aren't too far off, apparently grabbing a 9 with their appetizers. We might just win this thing yet, y'all! And next is the ribs. There's just one little complication. Owen, guard the food. <laughs> Owen, guard the food. So I did hear that correctly. You left Owen, the guy who makes Joey Chestnut look like a spokesperson for Jenny Craig, in charge of guarding the food. Is there anyone home? And may I ask the reason why the food even needed to be guarded? No, really, they don't even give a reason for leaving the food in the first place. The table had already been set up and the food is clearly all prepared. So they just let him guard it for no reason at all. Now we're back to phobia factor levels of forced again. Oh, it had to be now. On the plus side, we do get a hilarious test of endurance, as Owen musters everything in him to not let his gluttony consume him, and showing faithfulness and loyalty to his team and their win, stepping into another chapter of character development. Nah, just kidding, he eats the ribs completely. Tell me, you did not just eat that entire plate of ribs! Look at his eating, look. Have you got enough in there? But that's so good, it's really a waste. Wow. No, I mean, I just took a quick little bite. It's really tasty. Oh, f you see, this is what I meant by the challenge loss not entirely being Heather's fault. Because in her absence, I think Lashana would have made a more informed choice by having the food guard by Pac-Man. 
This looks like it's, uh, been eaten. Not all of it. I think there's a tiny chunk left on that bone. Well, that makes everything okay then. I've had worse. Two points. Yeah. To be fair, the cake that Lindsay and Heather screwed up also causes several points to be lost. Ooh, that's not good. Well, let me do Frank. She's a rubbish baker. That line alone made that movie for me. I hold no apologies to liking this flick. It's not like it was directed by Raja Gosnell. This causes the gophers to lose and in time for Heather to be free from her frigid prism. And faintly enough, she now has Mr. Freeze's skin color. You guys are so dead. You know, I think they should change the adage that they named this episode after. How about if you can't take the heat, get in the freezer? Heck, other Hell's Kitchen chefs have done that. I gotta cool off somehow. I tried to clear my head by sticking my head in the refrigerator. But I couldn't. And they discover Beth's tiki and realize the reason for their losing streak. I, I brought it back at the souvenir, you know, from the other island. You mean Boney Island? The one I specifically said not to take anything from or you'll be cursed? Once again, things that could have been brought to my attention yesterday! Okay, so what bad luck did Beth's Tiki cause here? Well, I guess Owen's bees encounters. As well as maybe Owen giving Trent a concussion with a crate of oranges. Nope, that's it. Pretty much everything regarding their loss was making of either dictatorship, stupidity, or a mixture of the two. Ugh! It's like I'm on a team of morons! So, in full, Best Idol is not the reason that they went on a losing streak. Despite that, I can conclude the Tiki was actually bad luck. Why? Ask every guy that hit on Gwen, and I do include Owen. Are you gonna be on my team? Oh, I sure hope so. Whoa! Counts to me. We then get some plan from the campers on either voting out Heather or Beth. And we even see Heather forgive Lindsay since she let her out of the fridge. I'll give you one more chance if you vote with me tonight. Well, mostly forgives her. Oh, and if you ever team up with Lashana against me again, I'll cut off all your hair while you're sleeping. What was that? Well, anyways... The campfire ceremony occurs, coming on to Beth and, big shocker, Heather. But the team uses what they feel is better judgment and vote Beth off. You heard him. Vote of losers. <laughs> that away. And this curse that's befallen the entire team and not just Gwen's admirers. I'll assume it left in the bow of losers along with Beth and her scapegoat plotline. So, good luck with that. And thus concludes the Tiki Trouble Trilogy and the episode ends and... Wait, what's going on? Good, Good morning, morning Harold. Harold! Oh yeah, the ending the Harold subplot. You see, the guys somehow get Harold's bed out in the lake with him completely naked. <laughs> and they force him to admit to leaving his underwear on the ground and to never do it again. Learned your lesson yet? Yes! Okay! Okay, this is not funny. It's basically a scenario where the bullies win. Oh, we're gonna need more than that, man. I'll never leave my crusty underwear out again! What the heck? I believe him! That's not what you do in this situation. It might have or better if it somehow really wasn't Harold's drawers on the floor. And then maybe Harold went crazy with revenge. But instead we have a bunch of smuckhead characters, including characters who shouldn't be smuckheads, doing a bunch of antagonistic troll-like things we've already seen before. Like getting Harold's pants wet. Oh gross, it works! Dude beat his pants! <laughs> Never heard that one before. And thus ends the high demand epilogue of that story. And that was If You Can't Take the Heat. Was it good? Sure. It's still pretty forged, and most of the stuff with the killer bass is redundant. But everything with the gophers is comedy and drama gold. Even if that doesn't always add up either. It really does capture the magic of what Hell's Kitchen was in my opinion. Even without a centralized Gordon Ramsay figure. But overall, I consider this episode a satisfying dying experience. But trust me when I say... That just because the bad luck has ended doesn't mean the drama has. GET OUT! I was about to, Chef. Get out! 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 Okay, okay, I'm leaving. But before I go, Chef, what's your favorite horror movie? Get out! Strong choice. Now I'm out of here.